In today's video project, we are going to be creating a cloud-based attack defend red team, blue team type cybersecurity home lab. Now, for those of you who don't know, cybersecurity home labs or home labs in general basically are a simulation of services, perhaps vulnerable machines. And really, you're trying to collect different telemetry, maybe simul simulate some different attacks, and you're trying to just help your overall training and skills. So leveraging AWS, we are going to be creating three different virtual machines, a security tools box, a Kali Linux attacker machine, as well as a Windows 10 workstation. All three of these machines are going to be connected together in its own isolated network via a VPC or virtual private cloud. And from here, we can actually run simulations. On the security tools box, we're going to be deploying two different tools, Splunk, which has its free enterprise trial license, and Nessus Vulnerability Scanner Open Source Community Edition. And on the Windows 10 workstation, we're going to set up a universal forwarder to forward all data to our security tools box. What this will allow us to do is see the telemetry or the data uh, deployed on that Windows 10 box. Theoretically, if malware were to be deployed on that workstation, we could see what type of commands are going to happen or what's being executed. Now, I'm not going to be deploying malware or running any simulations in today's video. Really, it's just about setting up the infrastructure to go out and create your own projects and do whatever you want to do. Now, there is going to be a Terraform module which allows you to basically automate the majority of the provisioning of this infrastructure, but I'm also going to have step-by-step uh, -step instructions with the UI. So let's get into the lab topology and what we're going to be doing. All right, so here is the network topology for today's project. Like I said, it's going to be three different virtual machines, also known as EC2 instances in the AWS network. Uh, and we're going to be creating this in our own virtual private cloud, which is basically a segmented network that lives out in the cloud. Uh, and we're going to have one public subnet, and these are where these three machines are going to be deployed. Now, as you can see on the right here, we have a router and internet gateway, which is going to allow us to reach the internet from all three of these different boxes. And we have this vulnerable box. So theoretically, if you wanted to, you could go out and, and deploy Metasploitable, for example, or another virtual machine, uh, and you could use the attacker machine to attack that box. But the core of this project is within these three boxes. The security box is going to have Ubuntu desktop installed. Attacker is going to be the latest version of Kali Linux. And Windows is going to be the Windows 10 workstation distribution. Now, for those of you who are interested in learning how to create a topology like this, I thought I would quickly share that I created this topology through Lucid app or Lucid chart. Uh, basically, it allows you to create these cool, extensive network topologies. Here you can look up like different shapes, for example, EC2, and you can get the EC2 instance. And sign up for the free trial edition. It gives you the features that you really need to create something basic like this. I thought I would just share here. Uh, so for those of you who don't have an AWS account, you will need to proceed to sign up for one and add in some payment details, such as a debit or credit card. Uh, so you will be charged for when this lab is provisioned. But further in this video, I'm going to show you how you can construct and then deconstruct this in a very programmatic way, and it makes it a lot cheaper for you. Once you sign up for AWS, you're going to be presented with the AWS console. Now here in front of me, I am in the VPC or virtual private cloud view. And up on the top right, as you can see, I'm going to be working out of the US-East-2 region. And basically, a region is a data center located around the world. So uh, AWS has a data center in Ohio, for example, which is US-East-2. Now, for those of you who are, are running on Mac OS, I would suggest you download the Microsoft Remote Desktop Utility uh, because we will have to RDP into the Windows 10 workstation host once that's provisioned. And if you are on a Windows box in turn, I do recommend that you work out of the WSL or Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, and you can get the Ubuntu distribution by going to the Windows store, looking up Ubuntu and finding 2204 here. You can download and install that. That will present you with a shell similar to the one here in front of me. And I'm going to be working out of this specifically in this video. 
Now, finally, in terms of automation, I wrote some Terraform configuration files, which allow us to provision the majority of this infrastructure, uh, and it's pretty easy to run. So you can go out on this GitHub project located on my GitHub account, and I'm gonna be showing you how to actually deploy this code. But basically, by the time you deploy this, everything is gonna be up and running. All you will need to do is install Splunk, the universal forwarder, and the Nessus vulnerability scanner on the security box. So it makes for something that's a lot easier, when you're done with the cybersecurity home lab, you can choose to do a Terraform destroy, which will destroy all this and that subsequently will not let you be charged. So um, I will show you how to do all of this here in this tutorial, but it's something to keep in mind for you. But I'm also going to be showing you how to do this through the UI manually because, well, I like to, I guess, to make my life a little harder. So uh, let's go ahead and proceed to get moving forward into the AWS console. Okay, so as I have previously highlighted, we can also provision all of this infrastructure using Terraform. Terraform is infrastructure as code, and basically it allows you to provision virtual machines and infrastructure programmatically through the command line by writing these Terraform config files. So here up in front of me, I have my GitHub project, Cloud Cybersecurity Home Lab. And this is where my Terraform files reside for you to download. This comes with some preset instructions, but it's pretty straightforward. Now you will want to make sure that you have Terraform installed. You can go to this page here and follow the instructions for your subsequent operating system. And basically it really comes down to about three or four different commands. Uh, to deploy this specific infrastructure, but there is a few things that we need to do to set up before we can uh, run these Terraform config files. IAM, so I have a new dashboard up here. You can just search IAM, and then I have it up in a new browser tab. So we're gonna have to configure a new user, which allows us to have full VPC and EC2 access to AWS. And we're gonna hard code these credentials into our AWS credentials file. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is go to users and we're gonna create a new user and we're gonna call this cloud cybersecurity home lab terraform. We don't really need to give the AWS Management Council here access, so we can click Next. Okay, so what we're gonna wanna do is go to the very right here, click Attach Policies Directly. You may not see any policies up here. I've already configured some prior to creating this video, but if you go to Attach Policies Directly, we're gonna attach two. First one is gonna be VPC full access to grant access to creating a VPC, and then you can make sure to check that and then go to EC2 full access so that we can provision EC2 instances. Then we can click next. And as you can see, these two permission policies have been attached to this user. We can add a tag if we want to, to make this more verbose, but I'm just going to click create user. All right, so now we have this new user up here. We can actually select this And if we go to the security credentials down here, we're gonna see this access keys. We're gonna create a new access key and add this to our credentials file within the AWS CLI. So what we wanna do is just click create access key and then choose other. And then it will warn you that maybe this is not the best practice, but it's okay for the time being. Again, this is just a demo environment. Click create access key. And then this is very important. So you will always be able to see this access key ID here, but the secret access key, this is the only time you'll ever be able to see this. So what I'm gonna do once again is copy this and add this into a notepad file for me to remember so I don't have to copy and paste this. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, I've copied this key here over to my notepad file. I'm gonna to proceed to click done and then click continue. 
All right, so we have our user set up. Now we need to actually add these credentials into our credentials file within the AWS CLI. So first off, what we need to make sure is that AWS CLI is installed via the command line. So if we go down to our Ubuntu instance here and just press in AWS, you're gonna see our little help menu. That means that yes, AWS is installed. Now, if this is your first time working with AWS and particularly the AWS CLI, uh, it's pretty easy to install the AWS CLI. What you're gonna need to do is just go to this install page here and you can follow along with whichever instruction set you want to. If you are on a Windows 10, Windows 11 uh, desktop that has WSL installed, you're just gonna want to follow the Linux x86 64-bit uh, operating system instructions here. So you can just simply copy and paste this command into your Ubuntu WSL shell here and you'll be good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna clear my screen and then I am going to navigate to CD tilde forward slash dot AWS. If we choose an LS here, you're gonna see a config and credentials file. Now, if you're, this is your first time using AWS, you may not see the credentials file. I'm not exactly sure if it sets this up by default, but you can just simply create a new credentials file by doing nano credentials, and then you can add in the following. So what I'm gonna do is just edit my current uh, credentials file. So call it nano credentials. Now you are going to see some things blurred out here. As you can see, there is the default access key ID as well as the secret access key. Um, what I'm going to do is change the following into something different. The, the user that we created is what we're going to add. So make sure that you have a default in square brackets up on the top. And then I am going to delete the following key. Okay, so I'm going to add in the ID and the key secret here in the credentials file and then save it. So I'm gonna go back and find my ID because I did not copy that and do my due diligence. That's easy, hopefully. Copy. Okay, paste that into the ID and then go into my notepad file for the secret since I did copy that one. You will not see that one up on the screen, but uh, once you're finished here, you have these keys uh, or these files installed. All right, so now you're just gonna do Control X, Y, Enter. And then you can clear the screen. Um, I am going to navigate back to my home projects demo. So I have set up a new directory location here on my WSL. You can choose to just install it uh, in your home directory, whatever you want. But the next thing we're gonna do is actually clone the GitHub project from my profile onto this here. Uh, so I'm just going to go over to my GitHub code, HTTPS, and copy. Now, once again, if you don't have Git installed, you're want, gonna want to go ahead and install Git. It's as simple as just installing uh, uh, sudo apt install Git, and you should be able to install it. But I already have Git here, so I'm going to do a Git clone, right click to paste this onto my screen, and then just wait and then change directories into here, and boom. I now am in the main configuration file where I have the various configurations. The last thing we need to do is create an SSH key pair. So right now I am in my uh, working directory where I've cloned the GitHub repo. I'm actually gonna go back to my browser and under the EC2 dashboard, we can go over to key pairs. Now you're gonna see a few key pairs already created here. I'm gonna go up to create key pair and I'm gonna call it cloud home lab terraform. And then choose the .pem file format and then create the key pair. Now remember uh, that this will be the private key. So you want to make sure to, to uh, store this somewhere secure Right now, I'm going to go into the Linux directory here, Ubuntu, home, grant, and uh, 
I'm going to store it in my .ssh directory. So paste that in. Okay. Now take note of what that key is called, Cloud Home Lab Terraform. Going back into my working directory, we are now ready to run the Terraform file. So we can do a Terraform init to initialize Terraform. Terraform plan. This will sketch out what we are going to provision. OK, so I've cleared my screen here. We are almost ready to apply. We've run Terraform init, Terraform plan, and now Terraform apply. All we need to do is do Terraform apply, and then this is very key here, dash var equals double quote AWS dash key equals, and then the name of our key file that we created. So cloud home lab Terraform dash home lab dash Terraform, and then end the double quote. And let's see what happens. You choose yes. If it successfully executed, you're going to see three public IP addresses outputted to the screen. These are the subsequent IP addresses uh, that will well, are, is our home lab. So basically what we can do uh, is proceed to try testing one of these. We're going to do the security tools box here. So if we just copy this and paste it into the browser, you should see this VNC um, upload here. If we go back to our AWS and go to instances, you're going to see a lot of uh, instances here. So I did this uh, test run before recording, but basically you're going to have some running EC2 instances. And then uh, for provisioning or getting access to each of these, what you're going to want to do is follow in the timestamps in the description below to get access to the Windows 10 desktop via RDP. We're going to install Kali Linux uh, with RDP as well. And then the security tools box, uh, you don't have to use RDP. It's already in the browser, but all the timestamps will be in the description below for when you want to go to that section. If we go to the VPC section, you can see that we have a cybersecurity home lab VPC that has been provisioned and created. So uh, yeah, this is basically good to go. So what we can do is once we're finished with our home lab, our experimentation, what we need to do is just simply do Terraform destroy. This will destroy all of the infrastructure. You can just do yes. And um, it is literally that easy. It will save you so much money if you choose to do this route. Uh, so now we are ready to go on to the next section, which is getting access to these machines. And then uh, after that, we can provision out Splunk and Nessus. Okay, so I'm up on the AWS console homepage here, and we're primarily going to be working out of the VPC and EC2 instance view. Uh, so let's proceed by starting with creating our own isolated network, also known as a VPC, in the AWS cloud. Uh, to do this, I go to the VPC, or you can look it up here, and we are going to be doing this manually. You can skip ahead to the Terraform version if you want to do that. Now go ahead and proceed to go to your VPCs. Here you're going to probably see no VPCs, or you're going to see probably one, which is going to be your default VPC. Uh, it probably won't have any name. Here I already have a Cloud Home Lab one. I was doing this before recording this video. Uh, so let's proceed to go into Create VPC. Now AWS makes this pretty easy. Uh, so what we're going to do is do VPC and more. And if you scroll to the right here, you can see the resources that this wizard will provision. Okay, so proceed to uh, type in a tag which will allow you to name the various VPC resources. I'm going to be calling this Cloud Cybersecurity Home Lab Demo, but you can do whatever you want. Leave the IPv4 address range in the 16 block here, and we're not going to have IPv6. For the availability zones, choose one. And basically, this is the specific number of data centers uh, that you want to deploy your VPC in. 
just because this is a demo or you know a little home lab, one is good enough. For number of public subnets, we're just gonna follow the topology that I mentioned earlier in the video. So it's gonna be one, and then number of private is going to be zero. NAT gateways allow you to get access to the internet from a private subnet. We won't need that since we're not provisioning a private subnet, and we won't need a VPC endpoint. Make sure to enable DNS host names and DNS resolution. So here in the graphic is what we're going to be creating one VPC, one subnet, one route table, and then two network connections. And that's going to have our uh, internet gateway being provisioned as well as our default route. All right, so we can just click create VPC and that's literally how easy it is to create your own isolated network in AWS. So when we proceed to view the VPC, here you can see uh, you know, the various details. There really isn't much that we need to look into right this moment. Going to your route tables, we're gonna see the route table that's been created. It's gonna have that specific name that we uh, added, and it's gonna have the public name. Of course, you're probably not gonna see these route tables. You may see, see some default route tables, but uh, as well as in the internet gateway, you're gonna have the resource being provisioned. All right, so scrolling to security groups. Security groups are virtual firewalls, which are attached to the virtual machines or EC2 instances. Again, you're probably not gonna see many security groups if you're a first time user of AWS. Now we are gonna to need to create some security groups which will be attached to our security tools box in the Kali Linux box. So proceed to go up to security groups here. All right, so for the first security group, we're gonna call it Cloud Cybersecurity Home Lab SG for short. Okay, quick pause here. I accidentally skipped over this section. So make sure that you add a description as well as change the default VPC to the VPC that you created, the Cloud Cybersecurity Home Lab, and then you'll be good to go. We're gonna be creating some inbound rules which will allow us for specific traffic to uh, reach this EC2 instance. So click add rule here. And uh, again, AWS makes this pretty straightforward. Uh, so the first one that we're going to add is all ICMP IPv4. And here you can choose to use my IP uh, which will source your public IP address. For me personally, I'm just gonna use anywhere IPv4. Is that the best rule? Probably not, but uh, that's okay because this is a demo environment. Again, we're gonna go back to add rule. Next one is gonna be RDP. For this specific one, I am gonna be using my public IP address. And then finally, one more rule, SSH, and then once again, my IP address. Scrolling down to outbound rules, I'm going to leave all outbound internet traffic uh, allow so we can proceed to create this specific security group. Okay, so all of our resources have been created in the VPC for the time being. Now we can proceed to move over to EC2 and deploy our three virtual machines. All right, so once you're on your EC2 view here, we're gonna go down to network and security and click key pairs. I have some key pairs already created, but these are our SSH key pairs that we need to load onto the virtual machines. Now, uh, I'm gonna create a desktop key pair, and this is gonna be the key pair that I'm gonna use for all three of my virtual machines. You can choose to use unique key pairs per instance or virtual machine, whatever you want to do. I'm just gonna keep it easy. It's a demo environment, it doesn't really matter that much. So uh, go to the key pair name. I'm gonna call it cybersecurity You can choose the RSA type and then use the PEM private key file. Okay, we're gonna create the key pair you're gonna notice that a new PEM file has been downloaded. Now, keep this secret. This is your private key. Right now, it's in my downloads folder. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually 
put this into my Linux subsystem for Linux Ubuntu shell uh, because I just want to work with it out of there. So in this particular example, what I'm doing for my Windows computer, and you can follow along if you're on Windows, is to basically just do a right-click cut, go to Linux, Ubuntu 22.04, home, your username. And then under the view, you can choose to view the hidden items, but here you can see you have an SSH folder. I'm going to paste my key or .pem file into here. This is the only time you'll ever be able to get the private key, so make sure you store it somewhere that you know, and we will be using this here to provision these EC2 instances. Alrighty, so once we have our key pair created, we can now proceed to launch our three EC2 instances, and we can do this by going to the Instances tab here. Now, you're probably not going to see any instances. I was just doing some testing before recording this video, uh, so you're not going to see anything here, but ultimately, we're going to be creating three virtual machines. So let's proceed to do this. Basically, it's a lot of picking up the buttons. Go to Launch Instances here, and we're going to be presented with the wizard where we can configure the details for each specific virtual machine EC2 instance. We're going to start out with the Kali Attacker machine. So call it Kali Attacker. We love attackers, right? We love Red Team. Uh, and within our Amazon machine image, AMI, think of an AMI as basically a template that allows you to load in a specific operating system. Here you can see uh, some different quick start ones. We're going to go to Browse More AMIs. From here, we're going to go to AWS Marketplace, choose Kali, search, and then select. Take note that you will have a price when you're subscribed to this AMI, and make sure that it's the Kali Linux distribution supported by the official Kali organization. All right, so select continue, scroll down. Now, it recommends you use the T2 medium, but I'm going to decrease this because, let's be honest, we're all on a budget here. Uh, so I'm going to choose the T2 micro. And basically, the instance type allows you to determine the compute details. So here, I just have one gigabyte of memory. That's all I need. Now, I was noted before. This is where we're going to add in our key pair. Uh, so I'm going to select the cybersecurity home lab here. And I'm going to be using this key pair for all three instances. In the network settings, choose edit. This is very important. So we're going to actually provision this EC2 instance out into that VPC that we created. Uh, so we can go scroll down and you're going to see this cybersecurity cloud home lab demo. It's going to automatically put it into the public subnet for us because, well, we already have a public subnet. And then this auto assign public IP, choose enable. For our security group, we're going to do a select existing security group. All right, so we're going to select within our security group, the cloud cybersecurity home lab uh, security group. And we're going to check that. And we're going to leave the default storage, which is just going to be 12 gigabytes. So we can proceed to launch this instance. And while this launches, we can go back up to EC2, instances, you can refresh, and you're going to see a pending instance state. That means it's being provisioned. So we're going to do this now for our next two boxes. So go up to launch instances. Lots of button clicking here. I'm going to create the security tools box. Scrolling down, go to browse more AMIs, AWS Marketplace. And here we're actually going to choose Net Spectrum. You can see that there is this Net Spectrum Ubuntu desktop. 
we're going to select this here and then click continue. Okay, scrolling down, the T3 large will work for our security tools box. I'm going to choose that default key pair. In the network settings, you're going to see all of these rules created. So for the Net Spectrum's Ubuntu security tools box, we're going to let it create its own default security group. So we're not going to select the one that we previously created. But we are going to go to edit. We're going to add this to our cloud home lab demo VPC and enable the automatic public IP address assignment. Okay, scrolling all the way down to the storage, I'm going to change this from 8 to 30 and then click launch instance. Okay, we have one more box here. So EC2 instances, instances. Okay, launch instance. Call this the Windows 10 workstation. We can actually use one of the quick starts version guides here. Uh, so I'm gonna be using the Windows 22 server base installation. T2 Micro works. For the key pair, I'm going to select the Cybersecurity Home Lab key pair. And then go to Edit, Provision this in the same VPC, Enable Automatic Public IP Address Assignment. And then this one, we are also going to choose the Cloud Cybersecurity Home Lab uh, Security Group. Change this storage. The storage, the default storage is good here. We're going to choose launch instances. All right, so now we should successfully, eventually, have three instances running the Kali box, the security tools box, and the Windows 10 workstation. Good stuff. Uh, so we're well on our way to creating our home lab. If you're following along with the UI instructions step by step, we need to edit the default security group, which was created when we launched the Net Spectrum Ubuntu Security Tools box. If you're following along with Terraform, you don't have to do this step, but we do need to edit that security group to allow a few more custom rules into our firewall. So what we're gonna do is go into our VPC view and make sure that you are in US East 2 or whichever region you're working out of. You're gonna go down to security, security groups, and then choose the particular security group. In this case, I have two of them here because I've been doing some uh, demos, but basically this is the one for our demo environment for this video. So I selected this, and if you go down, you can choose Edit Inbound Rules. And we're gonna add two rules. The first one is going to be Custom TCP on port 9997 and for the time being, I'm just going to allow this for everything. And then our next rule will be all ICMP IPv4, anywhere IPv4. And then you can click Save Rules. OK, so that will be good there. Uh, we will need those rules when we configure Splunk and test the connection between the various machines. OK, so. What I want to do is enable remote desktop protocol access to our Kali Linux machine. Uh, Windows 10 already comes automatically with RDP installed. All right, so I'm gonna open up a new Ubuntu desktop terminal. If you're on Mac OS or if you're on Linux, you can just open up your default terminal. All right, so I'm going to change directories into the squiggly line thing dot SSH. And if I do an LS here, you're going to recall that we added in our private key into the Linux directory, uh, which is the dot SSH directory. Now, if you're on Linux or if you're on uh, Mac OS, Unix, uh, what you want to do is make sure that you're in your .ssh directory where you're managing your keys. Uh, so what I'm going to do is change the permissions for my home lab file to only have uh, read permissions. And to do that, I can just do a chmod 400. 
pseudo chamad 400 cybersecurity home lab pen type in my root password ls l you're going to see that i have read permissions so if i go ahead and choose clear okay so if i copy the command in the ssh client here and then go to one two right click you're going to see that it says to do Kali so I can just quickly change that over from root to Kali and boom we are now into the Kali Linux shell so like I said, we want to add RDP access in here. Uh, and so I, I looked up a guide to actually get RDP access and it's relatively straightforward. The commands will be in the description below. So what we're gonna wanna do is print our working directory here. All right, so I'm gonna create a new file and this is gonna be a small bash script. Like I said, this will be in the description below. Uh, you can create whatever you want to do it. I'm just gonna be calling it rdp.sh and using my notes I'm going to copy this in so this will be in the description below um, so as you can see here basically we're going to be downloading a few packages and running uh, 3389 which is the default RDP port control X Y enter All right so next what we're going to do is change the permissions so we're going to do chmod 755 RDP SH. And then we're going to change to the root user and then do RDP SH. And this will work on upgrading and then downloading the subsequent packages. So I'm going to skip forward until this is complete. All right, in the Kali Linux box here, you can just click OK or Enter and then let this uh, proceed to install the rest. Okay, so once we're presented with the prompt here, we can proceed to change our Kali Linux password. So I have a command that I'm going to paste in here. Basically, it's just changing my password to the defaults again. Uh, so I can just hit enter and that will change there. And then finally, we are good to go with running the RDP service. So uh, once XRDP is up, we can proceed to use uh, system CTL by doing system CTL enable XRDP dash dash now. Finally, we can do a system CTL status XRDP. And if it's enabled and active, we're good to go. All right, so back on my desktop here, I proceeded to uh, Go ahead and open remote desktop connection. Recall that if you are an individual who is on Mac, you can choose to download this utility here. Um, and if you're on Linux, I trust that you can find something out there that will mimic RDP for you. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go up to my EC2 instances, and I'm going to select the Kali box here, and you're gonna see this public IPv4 address. Click copy paste, connect, yes. Okay, so from here, we're going to add in the password that we recently changed. And boom, we now have Kali Linux up and running. And uh, well, we're almost there. We just need to log in to our Windows 10 workstation as well as the security tools box. All right, so going back into instances, we have our Windows 10 workstation, our security tools box, and our Kali machine. Uh, what we're gonna do is log into our security tools box and then change the subsequent password. So highlighting the uh, sub security tools box here, you're gonna see this public IP address. And if we just copy this and paste this into the browser, you're going to see a password required section. So this is how we're going to access our Ubuntu tools box. Uh, and the default password is actually the EC2 instance ID. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is just copy this ID here. All 
Okay, so once you are in, you're going to um, basically be presented with a Ubuntu machine, which is pretty cool. Um, for right now, I'm just going to, be, I guess, just click next and done. And it gives you this default prompt here to change your VNC password. I'm going to do that real quick. So the next time that we log into this machine, it's not going to be the instance ID. It can be whatever you want it to be. And in my case, I'm just going to choose. Uh, all right, so now I'm done. I'm good to go there. So this is where we're going to provision Splunk as well as Nessus and all of the other tools. Okay, so for our final box, the Windows 10 workstation, what we're going to do is proceed to select it and then choose connect. Now this is a little bit different. We're actually going to have to get a password. So if we go to RDP client here, we can get the uh, password for this machine by choosing get password. And then we're going to have to upload that private key that we created earlier. So here I've already went to my Linux tab home, grant, SSH, and then getting the .pem file here. Now this is blurred out, but basically you're gonna, you can just choose to decrypt the password. And then you're gonna have your password presented here. What I'm gonna do is copy this and paste this into a notepad where I can save this to for later. Okay, so I've copied that over to notepad. Uh, now I can choose to minimize here and then I'm going to open up another RDP session. So uh, I'm just using the Windows key R M S T S C. Click OK. This will open up remote desktop protocol. Uh, and then from here, what I'm going to need to do is proceed to actually get the Windows 10 IP address, public IP address, and just another paste connect. The default username is administrator. Okay, we can choose yes. And boom, we are now into the Windows 10 workstation. So we have all three machines up and running. Back on my Windows 10 workstation here, one thing that we need to do is to turn off Windows Defender Firewall. So you can go to the search bar, look up Windows Defender Firewall, and you'll be presented with this view here. If we go on to turn Windows Defender Firewall on or off, I'm going to turn off for both of these settings and then click OK. Now this will turn off the firewall and this will allow us to send the Splunk events to our Splunk Enterprise instance. Okay, so at this point, we should have our three running instances up in AWS, Windows 10, Kali Linux, and our security tools box. Now we can proceed to actually go through and download Splunk and Nessus vulnerability scanner. So I have myself logged into my Ubuntu machine here on my browser, and then I have two RDP connections, one to Kali Linux, and then one to my uh, Windows 10 workstation. If that loads. Okay, so what we're going to do is go into our browser session here. We're going to start out with downloading Splunk. So if we go up to the Firefox browser here, basically this is just going to be a lot of clicking wizards and UIs and, and seeing what happens, but uh, uh, it's still good to get this done. Now, theoretically, you could definitely automate a lot of this through a configuration management automation tool such as a chef or, or puppet or um, specifically ansible but for the time being i'm trying to keep this relatively simple but for maybe a future video i can show you how to do that okay so in the link in the description below i will include the splunk enterprise trial edition uh, that you can install so i'm going to right click and copy now the browser session is a little different when working with the clipboard on the security tools box, you're gonna have this little clipboard button on the top right. And basically this is how you interface with the clipboard between this machine. So if you click the clipboard and then you right click and paste this. Okay, so now you have clipboard in there. And then we go in and right click paste, you're gonna have that uh, URL. So then you can hit enter and you'll be good to go. 
Now here you are going to have to uh, go ahead and create a new account. I'm just going to enter a whole bunch of dummy information and, well, I don't know, call it a day. So I'm going to do this real quick and then click create my account. Okay, so at this point we can click create account and I will save this because I'm using a temporary email and password. Uh, so let this load here. Okay, so we're going to be presented with our Splunk downloader. I am going to go to Linux. There's three different type of packages. All right, so I'm going to choose the .deb package. Just click download. You should see this being downloaded on our machine. All right, so I'm going to go to my desktop, right click, and choose open in terminal. Let's see here if I can. All right, so I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And you can see the installer here. Uh, so now we can proceed to install. This is pretty straightforward. We just need to issue a few commands. So first one is going to be sudo dpg for dpackage dash i splunk and then you can tab complete and then press enter. Okay, I cleared my screen. Then we're gonna go into the bin directory, ls, can clear it again, and then do a sudo dot splunk start. You have to read through the entire um, user agreement. I'm just using page down to get to the very bottom and then do y, yes. Why? Yes. All right, now we can enter a username. I'm going to call it Collins. And then a password. And this will start up a Splunk instance. Let this load until it says complete. Okay, so now we can go to the web interface here. I'm going to copy this, paste it into my browser session. And we should have a Splunk UI up and running. At this point, we can do our username and password that we configured via the terminal. Click sign in. I can save this password and we're good to go. So the next step is going to be installing a universal forwarder, which will forward data from our Windows 10 workstation over to our Splunk instance here. The first thing that we need to do is actually go to the settings pa page here and then go to forwarding and receiving. And then you're gonna choose configure receiving And then you can uh, create a new receiving port. And then choose 9997, save. All right, so now this server will be running on port 997 as a listener. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go back to my RDP session that has Windows 10, and I'm going to open up Microsoft Edge. I'm just going to run through the defaults here. Confirm and continue, continue without data, and confirm and start browsing. Okay, so I'm going to navigate to another URL, which will be in the description below, but you can simply go up, right-click, paste. And if Microsoft Edge was actually helpful, it's going to ask you to create a new account, I'm going to log into the one that I've already created when we configure the management console on Splunk. So just reject all. Okay, so now that I'm logged in, once again, going to paste in my universal forwarder. URL, hopefully this works. 
And now we're logged in. I can go to the Windows tab here and I'm gonna download the 64-bit version. So just click download. This will download a .msi file. So I will wait for this to install and then we can run it. And it's pretty easy to go through the wizard. So let's just wait once again. Okay, so I've navigated to my downloads folder and we're gonna see the .msi file. We can simply double click. Okay, so make sure to check this box here and then go to customize options next. And then here you can see the privileges to send. So I'm gonna send all of these next. And then when we get to Windows event logs, we can choose the specific logs. So I'm gonna choose application, security, and system, and then click next. And then I've already inputted my password, but basically you can input your username and password that you created for your Splunk UI uh, in the security tools box. So I've already done that and then just choose next. All right, so we can skip the deployment server section here, but then the receiving indexer, we are going to need to uh, configure the security toolbox private IP address. So minimizing out of here, I've already entered in an IP A, IP address A, which will show us our private IP address, so 10.0.15.148. So if I go back, type this in, 10.0.15.148, and then the default port of 9997, click next, and then install. And then this will install the universal forwarder for us. There's one more step we need to do uh, in order to send some different logs to our index, but we're good to go here. All right, so while this installs, I'm gonna minimize out of my Windows 10 workstation. I'm gonna go back into my Splunk UI in my security tools box. Go to settings and then cl click indexes. I'm gonna be creating a new index. And basically an index is an object which allows us to send data to a specific name. Uh, so I'm just gonna click create new index and I'm gonna call it win-security. I'm gonna leave all of the defaults here and then click save. So we should have this new win security index. All right, so now we can go back to our Windows 10 desktop. We're gonna wait for this to install. It looks like it's done. So we're just gonna click finish all right, so what we need to do next is send the Windows security events from this Windows workstation over to our security tools box. So I'm gonna open up a new file explorer and I'm going to paste the following path in this here. It will be in the description below. Here you're gonna see a few things. Um, so what I'm gonna do is proceed to copy the outputs configuration, control C, control V, and then rename this to inputs. I'm gonna double click this. And if you haven't already, you can right click open or open with, uh, and then you can open with notepad plus uh, plus or notepad in my, uh, it doesn't really matter. So what we want to do is make sure to add the following into the inputs.conf. So what this will do is send the security log events to the win-security index configured in Splunk. We can save this, exit out. Okay, next we're gonna go to our command prompt. We're going to change directories into the following path, link in the description below. And then we are going to type in splunk.exe restart. You may need to hit enter once for it to actually show up. All right, so navigating back into our security tools box, if we type in index equals win dash security, you're going to see our Windows event logs here. So we have successfully set up Splunk, an index, and a universal folder, which sends data from that Windows 10 box over to our Splunk Enterprise instance. Awesome. Uh, the final thing we need to do is install Tenable Nessus. So once again, this is gonna be pretty straightforward. We're gonna to go to the following link. 
All right, so what we need to do is change the Nessus version from a, a Arch 64 to AMD 64. Uh, so we can proceed to do this. Download. I agree. I accidentally installed the Arch 64 before this. Uh, so if we go over to Terminal and clear our screen, we're gonna, I'm going to see two, but you will only see one. It's going to be this AMD 64. Just do sudo dpackage dash i quotes nessus debian 10 amd 64 enter and then we're going to let this proceed to install all right so next what we're going to need to do is do a sudo system ctl start nessus d dot service you can do a system ctl status nessus d it says it's active. Okay, so if we go to our uh, browser here, you're gonna see that IP address output to the screen. So I've copied and then I'm just going to refresh, advanced, accept risk and continue. Okay, we can just click continue here. Register for Nessus Essentials. This is the free community edition. And then we can add in our username, password if we want to. Can skip this for the time being or we can't i don't really know let's see copy this let's see if this will work paste okay we can take note of this activation code click continue username and password admin admin because this is a demo environment and what this will do is allow us to set this up uh, this will take probably you know 20 to 30 minutes to basically have this up and running. But once this is up and running, we have Tenable Nessus. We can launch scans into our various machines, including the Windows 10 workstation here. And from there, we basically are good. We have a up and running cybersecurity home lab based in the cloud. And uh, well, yeah, this has been really fun. Hopefully you've learned something new here. All right, so here you can see the new UI being set up. Basically, we can let this compile all the plugins and we'll be good to go. You can run various scans. So this is what the Tenable Nessus Essentials dashboard looks like after we set it up. All right, so hopefully you've learned something new in this video. Go run your own simulation projects. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to continue on this video series, maybe doing some different simulations, deploying malware, being an attacker, or even running detections on the security box. Let me know if you want this series to continue. But hopefully this is good enough for a launching pad. And yeah, so until the next video, have a good day and have fun.